Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from Quick Med where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will be talking about a high yield USMLE topic which is how to diagnose and manage a breast lump. Breast lumps are often discovered either by the patient or the physician on clinical exam. The primary question that we want to address is whether or not these lumps are benign or malignant in nature. They are very common and the majority of them are benign. They can be cystic in appearance or solid or described as complex cysts, which is a combination of the two. They can be mobile or fixed in place on palpation. They can be associated with other changes such as skin dimpling, nipple retraction, discharge, or lymphadenopathy, primarily in the axillary region. And they can also be associated with a woman's menstrual cycle. There are both benign and malignant causes of breast lumps, and we will go over each one of these benign causes because those tend to be some of the more high yield ones that you'll be tested on. Some of the malignant causes include invasive ductal carcinoma, invasive lobular carcinoma, or a mixed picture of both, as well as ductal carcinoma in situ. The most common cause of breast cancer is invasive ductal carcinoma, and if you remember from anatomy, the breast tissue is composed of lobules where milk is produced that drains into ducts and is eventually released through the nipple. All right, so let's go over some of the benign causes. The exam writer is really like for you to be able to distinguish between these different etiologies, and so let's go over some high yield characteristics. So let's start with the fibroadenoma, which is the most common benign neoplasm in the breast. It is found oftentimes in young women, so you can see it in teenagers, women in their 20s and 30s. It's often well-defined and circular. It's firm, rubbery, and mobile. Rubbery is often a term that you'll see associated with fibroadenoma. Next is our cysts, which are fluid-filled masses. These are often discrete and compressible. Fibrocystic changes are third. and uh, These usually do not have a localized mass that's really well defined. It's usually more diffuse, nodular, or lumpy breast tissue that's bilateral, and it can be tender, and the tenderness is often cyclic associated with the menstrual cycles. And oftentimes it's not just painful during menstrual cycles, it can also increase in size during that time as well. Next is a galactosil, which is a milk retention cyst that is found in women who are breastfeeding. Fat necrosis is often the result of trauma, whether that's through blunt trauma or surgical trauma, and you can sometimes find an overlying ecchymosis or bruising on clinical exam. Breast abscesses are localized collections of pus that often develop in situations like mastitis or cellulitis in the breast, and so they present with pain, fever, and malaise, and they're often described as a tender mass that's fluctuant as well. The next three causes are on a separate slide because they have features that can make them appear malignant, although they are benign. For instance, the intraductal papilloma is a tiny ductal tumor that can present with bloody nipple discharge. It's actually the number one cause of bloody nipple discharge, and so this is something to keep in mind when answering test questions. The phyloides tumor is also a really high yield topic. It presents as a very, very large, bulky, and mobile mass on exam, and it's oftentimes seen in postmenopausal women. With a phyloides tumor, it's usually benign, but some of them can also be malignant. Our third cause is mammary duct ectasia, and this is when you have inflammation in the duct that leads to blockage and dilation of the duct. And so you can often find a subalveolar mass as well as sticky discharge that's greenish or yellowish in color. And when it comes to the malignant causes, I would say that there aren't many high yield characteristics that can help differentiate between the different disease processes that were mentioned earlier, unless you're taking your step one where you need to know the underlying histology. So in these cases, you need to be able to identify red flag symptoms and signs, such as if the patient is a BRCA gene carrier or has a family history of breast cancer. Risk also increases with age, so look out for patients who are postmenopausal or nearing menopause. And when it comes to evaluating breast lesions, age is actually a very important factor because women that are less than 30 years old will usually require just an ultrasound, whereas women who are over 30 years old will need a bilateral mammogram. And some malignant features to watch out for include irregular margins, as well as microcalcifications, which can appear as white speckles on a mammogram. We confirm the diagnosis with a breast biopsy, so that can include a fine needle aspiration where you put a needle through the lesion and aspirate its contents. And when it comes to how we evaluate breast nodules, the algorithm is pretty complicated, and so I doubt that the test will actually ask you for details beyond what's written on this slide. 
oftentimes they'll ask you more of how to diagnose the cause of a particular lesion, and that's where you need to rely on the high yield characteristics that were discussed earlier. All right, so let's run through a practice question. Here we have a 27-year-old female who presents to the office for a right breast lump that she noticed two days ago. She has no family history of breast cancer. On exam, the lesion is noted to be 2 centimeters in size. It's firm and mobile. There are no associated skin changes, axillary lymphadenopathy, or a nipple discharge. So here they're trying to tell us that there are no red flag signs. What is the most likely diagnosis? The answer here is B, fibroadenoma, because that is the most common cause of a benign neoplasm in the breast, and here we only are presented with benign features. Fibrocystic changes will usually present with bilateral features and no discrete mass, but usually but more of a lumpy nodular breast tissue. Breast abscesses will usually have tenderness and fever. Papilloma will present usually with bloody nipple discharge, and a phyloides tumor will usually be a very, very large mass that's often seen in postmenopausal women. And these are just some photos of a fibroadenoma. It's often present in the upper outer quadrant of the breast, and on ultrasound, you'll often see it as this very circular, well-circumscribed lesion that is solid in appearance. If it was more of a cyst, which is fluid-filled, it would have a more hyperechoic appearance. And so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, good luck studying everyone.